The following sermon, included in the morning exercises at Cripplegate, is called Why All Should Be Thankful by William Cooper, 1653. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. For Thessalonians 5, verse 18, the lesson which the Holy Ghost would have us learn in the text is thus summed up. It is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning Christians that in everything they give thanks, that they be thankful, as our word is more proper to our purpose. For though we have nothing of our own that is good to give God but thanks, yet neither do we properly give him that, seeing both our giving and the right manner of doing it are of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 4.7 1 Chronicles 29.14 Philippians 2.13 Our continual praying shows that we are always beggars, and our continual thanksgiving shows us always debtors. Our thanks, then, indeed, is a rebound of mercy heavenward, whence it came, and a holy reflection of the warm sunbeams of God's benefit shining on us. Query 1. Who are or ought to be thankful? Answer. The Lord has a return and tribute of praise due to him from all creatures. David names animate and inanimate creatures and bids them sing Alleluia, Psalm 147, as if all the world were but one concert of musical instruments tuned to God's glory. But he looks for it principally from men and angels, from all men. It is charged as an inexcusable sin incapable of any apology upon natural men, that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Romans 1, verse 21. The law of thankfulness is written upon the hearts of heathens, as may be proved at large, not only from heathen instances, but from Scripture also, as the Philistines, when they had taken Samson and killed Saul. Judges 16, verse 24. 1 Samuel 31, verse 9. And Belshazzar, who praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, Daniel 5, verse 23, which, although it be enough to shame unthankful Christians, yet it signified little. For all wicked men, though they have cause, yet they have no heart to this work, at least not often, nor at all as it should be. The persons engaged and most bound to this duty are the Thessalonians that believed in all the faithful upon the same account. Thankfulness described. All the service we perform to God, worship, the duties of both tables, yea, in the whole work of our Christian obedience and a holy conversation, is but a return of thankfulness to God. Yet thanksgiving in a text and doctrine is taken more strictly for a particular part of God's worship, distinct from prayer, which sometimes includes praise and thanks too, by which we render due praise to God for all our benefits, promised or bestowed, and that with our hearts, lips, and lives. Some affirm that much of religion is seen in piety to parents, observance to our betters, and thankfulness to our benefactors. God is indeed all these to us. Yet the proper notion of our thankfulness refers to God as our benefactor, and every benefit from God makes a receiver a debtor. Thankfulness is rather the confessing of our debt than the payment of it. For as much as we are bound always to be thankful, it does acknowledge we are always beholden to God and always insolvent. Now a child of God is bound to be thankful to God above all men because first he is more competent than any other by acts of reason and grace too. All that the scripture speaks as to the duty of thankfulness may be referred to these heads. Number one, to know and acknowledge the Lord's mercies. Number two, to remember them, that is to record and commemorate them. Three, to value and admire them. Four, to blaze and proclaim them. In all which a gracious soul is much more competent than a mere natural man, though endued with quick understanding, strong memory, and a great eloquence. For the Spirit of God has enlightened the believer's soul, 
and taught him this lesson. He is principled for it. He is a well-tuned instrument. His heart boils with good matter, and his tongue is a pen of a ready writer, as David speaks on this occasion, when he spake of the praises of the king in his song of love, Psalm 45, 1. The Spirit of God in a thankful soul is the breath of the organ, without which the pipes make no sound. Yea, is the breath of the trumpeter, by which the trumpet gives a certain and melodious sound. This is what makes that noble evangelical spirit, yea, that heavenly angelical spirit in Christians. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5, verses 18 to 20, which shows that what wine does in poets and good fellows it makes them sing and roar out catches by which they make music to the devil. So the Spirit of God in saints is the principle of all true thankfulness and holy joy towards God. And indeed there was a gracious frame of spirit this way in primitive Christians. Number two, he is more concerned than any other, as having received more than others. Unto whomsoever much is given of him shall much be required, Luke twelve forty eight meaning a proportion of duty is due according to the degree of every portion of mercy, whether you consider what is given or what is forgiven you. There are two things which every gracious soul will acknowledge. No man, saith he, in the world has deserved less of God than I, and none has received more of God than I. How much then am I concerned to be thankful? I have read of a holy man, that was seen once standing still with tears in his eyes and looking up to heaven, and being asked by one that passed by why he did so, said, I admired the Lord's mercy to me that did not make me a toad, that vermin being then casually at his feet. This least common mercy affects a gracious soul that knows he deserves nothing but misery. Mephibosheth bowed himself, and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Second Samuel 9, 8 When David had told him he should have his lands and eat bread at his table. When the Lord spares our lives and gives us common mercies, we must admire and adore his goodness. Query 2 Why and upon what grounds are Christians bound to give thanks in everything? Answer 1 It is the will of God in Christ Jesus. The will of God in Christ Jesus is the clearest rule and highest obligation to any soul for the performance of any duty. Oh, that men would nowadays study more, act by and hold fast to this rule, asking conscience in the performance of every duty. Is this the will of God in Christ Jesus? It was meet that this duty of thankfulness should be pressed and practiced under the gospel because it argues a spiritual and noble frame of soul, the highest pitch of grace, which is a true gospel frame. David, under the Old Testament, had a New Testament heart in this particular. His psalms, which were all pinned upon emergent occasions, are all tehila and tefila, prayer and praise. His heart and heart were so tuned to the praises of God, to psalms of degrees, to alleluias, that some have thought the Lord is praised with those psalms in heaven. Yet is it promised under the gospel that he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. Zechariah 12.8 Which some understand is to praise and thanksgiving upon the account of gospel grace. More punctually, 3. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. That is, Jesus Christ shows us the duty of thankfulness both by pattern and by precept. For he was not only ushered into the world with songs of thanksgiving by angels, by Zachary, by Mary, by Simeon, by the shepherds, Luke chapter 1, verse 46, 68, chapter 2, 13, 14, 20, and 29, but the Lord Jesus himself was a great pattern and precedent of thankfulness all his life long, and in this also was a true son of David. He thanked God frequently and fervently. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, 
and has revealed them unto babes, Matthew 11.25. When his disciples preach and cast out devils, thus also when he raised Lazarus, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, John 11, verse 41. When he was to eat common bread, he blessed it with giving of thanks, Mark 8, 6. Much more, consecrated bread, Luke twenty two nineteen. Thus was he a pattern of thankfulness. He did in everything give thanks. In like manner, we find him reproving the nine lepers for their unthankfulness, Luke seventeen seventeen and 18 which shows that he held out thankfulness as a duty. Personally, he gave a pattern and precept for it. Now, though this were enough to show it to be the will of God in Christ Jesus, yet these words reach further, namely, to show that it is a strain of the gospel and the apostles' doctrine and practice. For though they, through their commission and the great measure of God's Spirit in them, declared the will of God in Christ Jesus, they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Luke twenty four fifty two and 53. When the apostle Paul's spirit was in this, by whom so much of the will of God in Christ Jesus is revealed and penned, I need not rehearse, for all his epistles breathe out the praises of God's grace. Answer number two. Thanks and praise is the homage we owe to God for all we have and are therefore in everything to be rendered. We live precariously and at mercy. But by the grace of God I am what I am. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. God in his sovereignty might have left us in the womb of nothing and never made us or crushed us into nothing as soon as he made us. For it's not the potter power over the clay. Romans nine twenty one. Every moment we depend on him and hold all from him, Acts 17:28. His power over us is arbitrary and infinite. To the sovereign God we owe all, and therefore our thanks, who is first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Romans 11:35 and 36. For not considering this, Belshazzar smarted, to God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Daniel 5.23 The birds that lift up their bills at every drop they take may mind us of this duty. Common and constant mercies deserve special thanks because constant. Answer 3. Christians must give thanks in everything because they have special mercies. Innumerable and invaluable superadded to common mercies special and spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly things in Christ. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible. 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, Second Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. The decreeing and sending of Jesus Christ to and for poor sinners. The opening a fountain of grace in and by him. The making and ratifying a covenant of grace, in which the Lord Jesus is the angel and mediator. The precious promises, both absolute and conditional, thereupon with all other choice gospel privileges of grace and glory, as far as God's all-sufficiency and the infinite merit, satisfaction, and righteousness of the Son of God can reach. This deserves a suitable proportion of thanks and blessing from us both here and in heaven. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, Psalm 63, 3. That is, I will render special and continual praise for this above all other things. From the Puritan Sermons, 1659 to 1689, being the morning exercises at Cripple Gate, Volume 1. Matthew McMahon writes, William Cooper was a Puritan divine of whom little is known. He published several sermons, some appearing in Ansley's Morning Exercises of Cripple Gate and annotated the book of Daniel and Poole's commentary. This is the Puritan and Reformed audiobook podcast, www.puritanaudiobooks.net.